Hello. What are we going to talk about today? Seat time. I'm in a seat. I'm in a car. Headed to an autocross. And something I realized I've done, actually, probably for more than a decade now, especially back in the days when I had the Integra, now that I have the Subaru BRZ and SSC, is I practice. I practice a lot when I'm driving the car daily. So right now I'm driving to the race. And some of the things I do, I'm going to point out as I turn this camera around to show you, is really basically the summary is paying attention to where I am on the road. I'm trying to learn how wide this car is. If there's little things to run over, even better, because I can see if I'm hitting them or not hitting them. I also use these mirrors I'll show you to see if I'm close to what I want to be close to. And the other real thing is just trying to get this brain to realize where am I like, we're all pretty good at being in a lane, right? We're driving on the road. We're usually in the lane. When autocross, our lane or our line should be what? Way skinnier. Our ideal line, the racing line. We want to have that within a foot or two, probably where we would like to be at all times. So that's something that can you make yourself focus for a minute, for two minutes while driving down a freeway, the roads in your neighborhood, can you get used to knowing where am I at, where should I be, and make the corrections to get there? Since my mirrors are turned down, I will flip this around and show you. I have my mirrors turned really low, so if your head remind that, you can see, especially if you move your head at all, or you set your mirror just right, you can see how close you are to what you're driving over. And what I'll do there is, oh, no, I hit those. I hit those dashes, or I hit those lines. So I'm playing the game while I'm driving if there's nothing to hit, or nothing to feel, I should say, with the wheel. Of how close am I to what I'm driving over? The same thing's happening over there. That mirror is turned down so I can see what are my tires driving over. And that's very helpful. I also really like rumble strips, and the places that don't have snow plows, you have the little reflectors that stick up or you have the bumps. I know in Houston, a lot of times you have three of the little bumps in a row. Now, what I really like about that is no matter what car I'm in, rental car, tow truck, <laughs> tow vehicle, any of those things, I really like to say, hey, where am I at? Can I make it between them or am I hitting them? So the mirrors are very good, especially on low, long trips where you're just going on the interstate and there's nothing really to feel. In this case, right now, there's places where they remove the lines. You can sometimes feel those. So you can get a little extra feel and say, hey, am I on that the black line right there on the passenger side? Am I on that? If there's any potholes, can I get close to it but not quite hit it? In Texas, it seemed like there are a lot more cans on the road. And the fun it was in hitting the whole can was trying to hit half the can. And check your mirror, like, did I get all of it or just part of it? So the mirrors are turned down. And the other big thing I like to challenge myself to do is can I focus for a minute or two or three of where am I at in the lane? Am I on the left-hand side, the right-hand side? Am I where I want to be? Am I close to what I want to be to? Am I close to the left-hand side? And I find this very helpful when I'm in my my community where it's curving. The roads are much more curving, so I can play little games of here's the apex, look at it. This section's kind of nice because I can be checking my mirrors and no one's around and say, hey, am I right on that line? Oh, yeah, pretty close. Engaging. Am I six inches away? Am I a foot? Where am I and where do I want to be? And then I'll come back over and play on the left-hand side. Oh, well, there's a vehicle now, so I won't really play too close there. But where am I at? How close is this car to that? And I think that's an advantage for those of you who drive your own car daily or can't drive it on the streets. You can get a lot more seat time than somebody that's only towing their vehicle. You really can. But that still doesn't keep you from doing the mental side of, okay, here I am, I'm, I'm playing this game of, oh, I see, I'm going to come back over here. Oh, bump. hit the left-hand side. It gently curves, so I'm going to get back over here and cut distance. I'm usually thinking about that. What's the shortest distance from here to there? And can I be disciplined enough to get there? Up here, here comes a mile marker. If you're going down the interstate, you might often forget to do this. If you see a mile marker, say, hey, for the next mile... I'm going to focus for this whole minute or 50 seconds or whatever it is, just like an autocross run, and see where am I at, where do I want to be? 
because even though we have a whole lane here, which most of us are pretty good now at staying in our lane on the road, in racing, our lane is so much our ideal racing lane, ideal racing line. We might have a foot or two of play in that. It's where am I at, where do I want to be, and make a correction to get back there. And even though we're not at the limit, whoa, I did not look ahead and see that until the last second. Even though we don't need to, I still also, especially now that I'm not left foot braking, I'm trying to get used to lifting and not lifting, or lifting and a little bit of break. So I can basically, especially in a neighborhood, I would take different roads, back when I lived in the city especially, where there weren't stop signs, so I could go up, over, up, over, up, over, and I would practice, okay, lift, get on the brake, get back to the gas. I would also do a big thing of, I would take one input on the wheel and see, did that one input get me through the turn? Or did the one input only, or did the one input make me too tight, too far out? Along with that single input, I also really liked to be modulating the throttle, like more throttle if I am too tight, hoping my line goes out, or lifting off the throttle to see if I would suck in some. And once again, we're not at the limit, so you won't be able to really see a big difference, but at least in my mind, I'm thinking, can I do that? A couple more things here. When I'm looking in the mirror, I'm actually scanning back and forth, which is another autocross thing I think is huge. And hint, hint, or let's put it out there, hopefully I'm gonna have a way to track eyes so we can make some videos to see that. But I'm scanning mirror, actual pavement, mirror, pavement here, back and forth, back and forth, where am I at? I think it's a good habit of practicing the scanning, even on the interstate like this. Mirror, oh, I'm, oh, now I'm almost on it. And correcting, right, I'm correcting. Just like an autocross, where am I at, where do I wanna be? Back and forth and back and forth, mirror back and forth. The other thing, actually I gotta show you the wheel, is I notice a lot of people, it seems like if you have this habit, you turn in, the car is pushy, so it's not gripping like you want it to, you turn some more. What I've been telling people and having people do lately is, you get the wheel, and I want you in the habit when you've made a turn into a sweeper, especially a 180, something, anything, decent turn, you're gonna basically be playing with the wheel back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And what I'm really hoping is, currently you turn the wheel and the tires start talking a little bit, and then you turn it more and they're actually screaming. You don't get that they're screaming for you to unwind the wheel. So what I've seen that helps, of course, having somebody ride with you too and saying, hey, if the tires are screaming, maybe tell me. So if you're not doing this on your own, say, I want you to remind me to turn the wheel while I'm in turns, especially sweepers. And what you should notice is tires scream, tires don't scream as much. Screaming, stop inputting, less input, better. And if you get in the habit of you're moving the wheel at least a little bit, like depending on your steering rack, in the Civic, in STS, man, you could really move that guy, and maybe it was Toyos as well. And it didn't seem to slow you down, it actually seemed to work pretty well. But if you can do that, you'll hopefully then pick up the audible of, too much, oh better. They're screaming for less. I've gotta come here. And the other key to that is usually, when you're hearing they're screaming, you need to come back a little bit and lift off the accelerator. Adding more throttle does not magically make things better. It makes them slightly worse for the left-hand turns or right-hand turns. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember the other point there. During these turns, this is take two because someone recorded all this. Well, we didn't record it. We, we practiced it on accident. So we got the inputs. Oh, so right now the steering wheel is now showing you the grip, the maximum grip of a car in a turn, let's say. Whereas the top is the max amount of grip. If you haven't reached the maximum amount of grip, you're over here. If you've gone past it, you're over here. So you're lower than the maximum grip off, off. You fall off both sides. The, the curve, what is it? The friction circle curve, let's think of that, where the max is at the top, let's say. A point here is, right here is optimal. Where you wanna be. We always wanna be here on the racing line at the maximum grip. We, if we fall off 10% because we're not going as fast, we don't have the right input on the wheel, or we're 10% too, too much, same difference, we're still only at 90% of the maximum grip. If you're road racing and you're always on the left-hand turn too far on the aggressive side, 
you're wearing your tires out, you're overheating them more quickly. And that somewhat applies to autocross, but more so when you're over here, you can't be more aggressive. You have to know to open the wheel and slow down. If you're on this side, and you're not gonna hit the cone you're approaching, you can add more throttle to get closer to this. You can add more throttle to approach here until your line gets off. Over here, you have to know I have to lift to come back to maximum grip. On the too low of a side, not enough input or not enough speed, you get to increase it. So some of this may very key on you knowing where you're at. Are you usually too aggressive? Do you have a habit of in a sweeper, you're over inputting on a left hand sweeper and you're really over inputting or over inputting on the right hand sweeper? To really realize, is that working or is it not? All right, actually I'm not gonna flip back to my, my pretty face right now. Like that's why the video stopped last time. So review, another thing I do when I'm in the city, especially where I have lots of turns or my neighborhood, I am really focused now, especially this year, on my right hand, or my, yeah, my right foot pedal, the gas pedal. And it's also now doing a break. So not only am I thinking just lift here and add a little more percentages of, I need a little more throttle, like 10%, 20%, 30% more. I need to come off 10%, 30%. I'm doing that. And I'm also going, oh, just a little bit of break. And something I've got to add into my, my testing or my practicing, my seat time practice, is coming off that brake easy. And it may be approaching stops. I'm in, maybe I'm in somewhat aggressive, somewhat firm, off nice and easy. In, off nice and easy. So those are things I do over and over. We just went through some S's. Usually I'd be like, once again, here I'm playing this game. I'm over here on this side. I'm on the left. I'm going to check my mirrors. Is there a rumble strip? That's what's over here. The lane's going away. There's arrows to play with. Oh, the rumble strips. Oh, just on it. Oh, so that means I'm on the white line right now, but I'm not on the rumble. Oh, a little bit of rumble. Hey, and a big slowing down. See, even doing this, got to scan ahead. <laughs> Luckily, bad video if I was like hitting something going, oh, there's people stopped up here. So at all times, I'm practicing not only the scanning, but also trying to have that focus. See a mile marker and try to focus for one minute, two minutes, three minutes. How long can I do that for? So hopefully you guys get some tips or have some tips. Let me know if you can help.